Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, May 1st, 2017. What's going on? How are you? You like that? Echo! I am in my garage. This is what it's come down to. It's like fucking a quarter to seven or ten and seven in the morning. I got to go to the airport. My lovely daughter is sleeping. My wife is sleeping. There's no place in the house for me to scream and yell, so I'm out here in the garage. And oh, by the way, in less, well, about an hour, around 8 o'clock, there's people coming to my house because, um, well, you know, the gas line is, I don't know, 96 years fucking old. <laughs> so that thing needs to be replaced because it's leaking all over the goddamn place. Um, that's always fun. To have a baby in your hands, you set it down towards the floor and you have to say things to your wife like, um, do you smell gas? So um, getting that taken care of today and uh, this is it. This is where my life is at. So I'm sitting here on my workout bench that uh, I can't use because I fucked up my shoulder. It's gradually getting better. This is the longest, most nagging fucking injury ever to try to heal, but I'm almost there. And um, this is how I'm going to do it, people. This is how I'm going to celebrate. This is the 10-year anniversary of the Monday Morning Podcast. Can you believe that? For 10 years, I have been yapping to myself. You know, 10 years I have not been reading. 10 years I've been making up shit. For 10 years I've been saying shit that I I thought was true because I heard somebody say it in an airport. I've been doing that for 10 years. Um, I want to thank everybody who's been listening. Um, and I'm going to put a, a link to a post, whatever the fuck you guys say. It's a, it's a thing that you click on and then it goes to the video that you want to watch, which will be the, um, the first Monday morning podcast ever, which I believe was about 90 seconds long. I'll give you a little history. I was over uh, Robert Kelly's apartment back. We used to live right around the corner of each other when I was still living in New York City. And I was over his house, and he was just, you know, it was typical Bob. He was just like, dude, yeah, you should do a podcast, dude. This is in two, May of 2007. One of the few things I've ever been at the beginning of. Podcasting and getting a special on Netflix. Those were the two things I was at the front. Like, I remember, you know, for my intro in comedy clubs, I would say, uh, they like, what do you want to say? Oh, say he's been on this, he's been on that, and you can see... He might have seen his specials on Netflix, and the host would say it, and people would snicker. They'd laugh in the crowd. They'd laugh at that credit. Well, now look at it, huh? Look at the the, the fucking world-dominating behemoth, you know? There's oil companies now that look at Netflix like, God damn, how the fuck did you do that? Without firing a shot? How the fuck did you do that, All right? So Netflix, <laughs> Netflix and podcasting. You know, if I was if I was in an oil company, I would. Uh, I said I would do. I'd start coming up with some original content. You know what I mean, and just make the show so amazing. You know that the stars would then go over to those countries, and while everybody was fawning over the cast of the reboot of Friends, I would then run around the corner and I would start stealing their oil. That's that's how I would do it. You know, it's a lot less messy. You know, there's the excitement. Am I going to get caught? Right. Um, anyways, back in the day. So I'm over Robert Kelly's apartment. He's like, dude, you should do a podcast, dude. And I was like, what is a uh, what is a podcast? It's, 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 it's like uh, it's a recording, dude. It's another way to connect with your fans, dude. Who knows, dude? Now people listen to it. Next thing you know, you're doing the Stress Factory Tuesday through Sunday, dude. And I'm literally just fucking around on it. And I actually, I called it. If you listen to my first podcast, you listen to the link, I actually said it. I said, uh, this is my podcast. I was basically repeating everything that Bobby was kind of yelling to me in the background. And um, and I called it. I said, uh, and who knows, maybe this might lead to something mediocre. And you know what? It took might have taken me 10 years, but God damn it, I got there. Here I am. Sitting here in my fucking garage. This is not some sort of cool reverb that you're listening to. This is me in my garage. Um, you know what's amazing, though? is I got to tell you something. I don't know what it is. It's, I'm such a it's cliched guy. I fucking love the garage. The garage is the shit. 
You know what I mean? It takes you back to being a single man when you barely had anything. Because I have one of those fucking garages, by the way. I was not going to be the person that had the garage, right? That, like, you buy shit and there's no more room for the shit in your house. And then you take some other shit that you used to like and you stick it in a box and then you stick it in the garage, right? And gradually it starts encroaching on the car. And next thing you know, the car can't be in there and it just fucking fills all the way up. Well, you know what you're doing? You're slowly becoming a fucking hoarder. That's one of the saddest things. I actually, you know, I can't understand whether it's sad or whether it's um, you're just taking responsibility for for all the shit that you buy in your life. You know, I guess anybody can take it down to goodwill. Anybody can throw it in the trash, take it to the dump. It takes a real caring hu- human being, a real caring human being, to just sit there. And in, in, in all the fucking shit you bought your entire life, every fucking newspaper, every tube of toothpaste, just sitting there suffocating in your own fucking carbon footprint. <laughs> you know, I just realized, you know, we shouldn't be looking down at hoarders. We should be looking at these people going like, holy shit, one human being, one human being can buy all of that shit. In a life, it's not even a lifetime. They're still living. You know, you can have that many pets, fucking fish tanks, newspapers, and all of that crap. Um, I don't know how it happened. I'm sitting there looking over right now. You know, my neat little fucking garage. I got like two different brooms. I got this old fucking mop. I don't even know where that thing came from. I think it came with the house. You know? And I've been meaning to throw that thing out. But where, where does it end up? Huh? Fucking in some beaver's house? Some stupid mop handle sticking through his little fucking thatch of a roof? Are those things fast, by the way? I got those giant goddamn teeth. It's fucking horse teeth. Dude, it's so they can cut through the back, dude. Anyway, so it's been 10 years. And um, I'm actually, you know, I had people on Twitter send in some of their favorite moments which I'll be reading later, if I can somehow get this fucking computer to work while I'm out here. Um, yeah, so anyways, let's get on with the podcast. So I, I didn't know if I even said it. Thank you guys for listening uh, throughout the years. Thank you to everybody who's, who's advertised on the podcast, whether you liked the read or you didn't, whether you got upset and said, uh, I'm never going to advertise again, whatever. It was, it was fun. I had a lot of fun. So... Here's to the next 10 years. I'm still not going to read, right? I don't know. Whatever. You know what I like, though? I'm a buck 76 right now. I do like that. I weigh 176 pounds. So I'm roughly the fucking weight I was. That's probably a few pounds lighter, but I got to get down to it. I got to get down. The end of the month, next month's my birthday. I want to be like 170, 171, right? And you know what? I get down to that weight. I get down to that weight. Guess what? Then I'll be happy. Ah, oh, then it'll fill the void. You know, when I go on, I put my little fucking Tiger Woods golf shirt on, even though I don't fucking golf. Um, anyways, is that fucking guy ever going to win another tournament? It really bugs me. It really fucking bothers me that there's a bunch of broads out there that think the reason why he never won another fucking tournament was because of the bullshit of his personal life. Give me a fucking break. His body broke down. That's what the fuck happened. This guy's a champion. Do you understand what the champion can do? A champion can block anything out. You ever see these guys going up trying to hit the, the fucking free throws? Everybody just waving their hands, screaming a bunch of shit about the guy's wife. What does he do? Nothing but net. Nothing but fucking net. You know, this guy can't handle a little spat. He gets hit with a golf club. He jumps in his Escalade and he hits a fucking rose bush and all of a sudden all of that talent goes away. I don't know. I don't buy it. I think, and I think the reason why some women, some women, look at me, being a little measured in the next 10 years. Some women, the reason why I think they attribute it to that is because, I, you know, I think that they want to buy into that whole fucking thing. It's behind every good man is a good woman. You know what I mean? Which is so fucking stupid, right? Obviously, if you have a happy fucking marriage, your life's going to be all right. But that's just another fucking, you know, everybody's always stealing credit. I always thought it was a Hollywood thing until you get into a relationship. Everybody's fucking sits there. 
Oh, now I'm laying down. There you go. Now the back's better. Now the fucking back's better. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Um, did anybody watch the Formula One race from Sochi in, uh, in Russia? 